box. Uh, now let's uh, look at this debugging work. So instead of finding the new bug, uh, let's look at how to uh, find the root cause of, of the bug if we know there's a failure. And uh, this work will talk about how to efficiently find the bug cause uh, in terms of paying less cost. So I'm Ju Qiang Zhuo from uh, University of Irvine. And uh, this is joint work with my colleagues uh, Lu Fang and Professor Guo Qing Xu uh, uh, from the same university, UCI. And also uh, Professor Siu Chen Ku, uh, University of, uh, National University of Singapore, uh, as well as uh, Professor Shan Lu uh, with uh, University of Chicago. So uh, as is well known, so software bugs are prevalent. Uh, given a new software uh, before deployment, uh, there are several bugs. So developers will you know, definitely test it, run it. Uh, so several bugs are gone. So we call uh, this phase is a uh, in-house testing or debugging. And then the software uh, is deployed to the users and user run it. Uh, it could lead uh, the crashes, uh, output, run outputs uh, due to the remaining bugs inside. So developers need to handle those bugs. So we call this phase is a production run debugging or uh, some, something called a post deployment debugging. Uh, there are several approaches. Uh, the traditional approach actually is collect the bug reports from the uh, user side, uh, from from the user side. So then the developer reproduce the debug uh, at the developer side. Uh, that's one, but it's due to the platforms or config issues, it's a little bit tough to do that. So there is one another promising approach uh, proposed by a ben, uh, Professor Ben uh from uh, Stanford at that time. Uh, so it's called cooperative studio debugging. Uh, so the workflow is like here. We have a program. Uh, then we will instrument the program. Uh, for example, we select se several predicates we are interested in. And then the instrument version will be deployed to users. User run the instrument program to generate the traces. And those traces uh, will, be, will be collected uh, through the network to, user, to the developer side and then uh, to do whatever the statistical analysis. And finally, a top key uh, bug reports will be reported to the developer uh, to assist them in debugging. Uh, however, to make this approach really practical, there are several issues we need to handle. Sorry. Uh, for example, here, uh, since the user needs to run the instrument version, so we need to make sure the overhead at user side is pretty low uh, to encourage the users uh, to partici participate. And also from the perspective of developers, since uh, they need to collect the profiles through the network, and then there is also the collection cost uh, as well as the analysis cost. So researchers, several researchers have proposed this uh, sampling-based approach. Uh, instead of instrument the full uh, program, so they just uh, a subset, a, a sample subset of elements will be executed at a user side, and uh, therefore the overhead is reduced. Uh, however, to maintain the debugging quality. Uh, uh, we need to collect uh, much more number of profiles. Uh, therefore, from the perspective of developers, the collection cost and uh, the analy analy uh, analysis cost is still uh, a big problem. And uh, also, there's another called a uh, heuristics-based approach. So this is an iterative uh, process. So at each iteration, uh, there are a few of elements are selected. Uh, for the instrumentation uh, based on some uh, heuristics. And uh, at the end of each iteration, the developers need to terminate, need to decide, check those reports manually to decide whether we got the real bug. If it's, then we terminate. Otherwise, we uh, select another subset of elements for instrumentation. Uh, so the heuristic uh, could be uh, different, different ways. For example, uh, you can start from the filling point just to get a small subset of predicates near the filling point. And then at each iteration, you select another set of 
uh, predicates along the control flow graph or the dependence graph. You do it again and again. Uh, so like I said, the overhead is small at user side because uh, only a few predicates are instrumented. Uh, and also the collection cost is reduced. Uh, however, uh, the, there, there are many effort needed. Uh, all they just, they don't manually check them, it just uh, run the fixed number of iterations and then it terminates. Uh, so the quality of debugging is uh, hardly, uh, hardly maintained. So in our approach, uh, in our work, so we ask the question, so can we reduce the debugging cost uh, while upholding the debugging quality uh, in an automatic and rigorous way? Automatic, automatic means we don't need that much uh, manual effort to check anything. And uh, rigorous uh, in the sense that uh, we want to get the same uh, result as the fully instrumentation approach. So before uh, talking the detail of our, our approach, let's look at some background information. The uh, program elements uh, we're interested in for instrumentation is uh, our predicates. So uh, there are three different types of predicates. And uh, so uh, branch, uh, for the branch uh, conditional, whether it's true or false, and also for return scalar pair values. Uh, we adopt this uh, importance metric as a suspicious measure uh, uh, for the predicates. Uh, this is introduced by the uh, same work. Uh. So given a predicate uh, E uh, through the instrumentation and uh, the, uh, by, by, analyze, uh, by analyzing the uh, execution information, we get these four values for E, uh, which are the number of passing filling runs where E is executed. And then uh, we give these values to this uh, formula uh, importance, then we can get an importance value for each predicate. And this value is a kind of measure of the suspiciousness of E uh, in the sense that if, you if a predicate has a higher important value, that means it's more likely, uh, it's, it's highly correlated to the bug. Uh, so remember that. The goal is to reduce the debugging cost while upholding the debugging quality. Uh, this is our approach. Uh, our approach is inspired by this abstraction refinement uh, technique. So we have two different phases. One is abstraction phase, uh, where the, we only focus instrument the function entries to collect the suspicious information of function. And then uh, we will use this information to guide the refinement at the perky level. So the insight behind this is that we, is that the, the abstraction uh, information, for example, the function execution information can be regarded as an approximation uh, and to be used uh, to guide the refinement. And we iterate this process until we get the same uh, result as the fully, instrumented, fully instrumentation approach. So let me show you uh, how our approach works conceptually. So for example, we have a program which consists of several functions. And within each function, there are several predicates. Remember that we are focused on these, uh, those predicates. So at the first phase, we only instrument the function entries since they are lightweight. So uh, we don't need to pay much. And uh, then we collect the information for each function. Uh, then we will use this one to uh, refine uh, th those information to, to decide uh, what function we should refine for the predicate level instrumentation. For example, here we refine the first function uh, to get the information uh, for all the predicates within F1. And also next the one maybe is F4 and so on and so forth. And then we found maybe uh, at this end of this iteration, we get the same r result as the fully instrumented approach, then we can simply terminate. So therefore, all other predicates uh, will be pruned away. Uh, so right here, now the question is, how do you decide which function you should refine first and then another later? And also, when and where you can terminate safely to say, OK, I get the same, totally same result as the fully, instrument, fully instrumentation approach. Now. Uh, 
So like I said, we have the abstraction phase uh, where the abstract, in abstract information is collected for, uh, at the function level. Uh, therefore, we can get for each function, we can get these two values, uh, which is the number of passing runs and filling runs or where f is executed respectively. Uh, now, the mass of our approach is a uh, suspicious metric C to measure the suspiciousness of function. Right, we want to use this C to build a connection between the function level uh, information with the predicate level information. And now we want to see how these two properties. So given a F, the C F value should be an upper bound of all uh, the importance value, uh, all the importance values of E inside this F. And uh, also, uh, C should be as small as possible. So uh, now the question is, so why do you need C satisfy these properties? And uh, secondly, so if we can get this C satisfy these properties, so uh, how to, uh, sorry, uh, first is, yeah, why to need C to satisfy these two properties? And also, how do you can get, it, how do you get this C uh, satisfying these uh, two properties? Uh, without instrumenting the, the E's inside F. Uh, let me show you the reason uh, why we need C satisfy these two properties. Actually, this also explains how our work, how our approach works. Uh, remember, we first instrument all the function entries to get the P value and N value for each function. Uh, now, uh, we need a C to uh, get the C value for each function. Uh, currently, let's assume we can get this C. Uh, later, I'll show you how to get this C. And uh, this C satisfy the property. The C F value is an upper bound of all the important values of uh, those predicates inside F. Now, uh, Having this C value and those functions will rank those functions according to the C values uh, in uh, ascending order, uh, descending order. And then we'll, we know, okay, F1 has the highest C value. So we all refine function F1 first. Then by instrumenting all the predicates within F1, we do the, uh, we run the instrument version and then we get the, all the uh, values for each predicate then we can compute the importance value. Now we have the top three uh, predicates. Uh, let's assume our goal is to get the top three uh, predicates. And then, so can we terminate now? If these three, are these three the predicates the same as the, 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 the true top three? So what we did is we compare the value of the next function with the current top, uh, the third uh, uh, importance value, and we found, okay, the 0 0.85 is bigger than 0 0.5. That means it's still possible that there are some other uh, predicates whose importance value will be bigger than 0 0.5. So we need to refine the next uh, F4, uh, do the same thing, then we collect, we get the important value for others, uh, for, for the predicates inside F4. We re-rank uh, the top three. Now the top, the third one is e, uh, E3 with importance value uh, 0 0.7. We did the same thing. We look at the next function with the highest uh, C value, which is 0 0.65. And then we found, okay, this value is less than 0 0.7, means what? That means there's no predicates whose important value could be bigger than five. And also, it's not possible to have any predicate inside F2 whose important value is bigger than 0 0.7. So we can know, okay, all these three are the real top three. Therefore, uh, we can prune those predicates and then this is the result. Okay, let's go to the second question. So how to get this C value without instrumenting all the predicates inside a function F, right? Look at the, 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 the workflow of our approach. That, this property is pretty important. 
it's, it's kind of, okay, so we don't know those one, but we want to get these values. Let's look at these two suspicious metrics for predicate and function, uh, which is importance and C, uh, respectively. Uh, you can see importance has two uh, parameters. Uh, actually, it has four, but the other two are highly correlated with, uh, with these two. So for simplicity, I only show two. Uh, this is uh, PE and NE, which are the number of passing runs and filling runs where E is executed, respectively. And also, uh, we can get the PF and F for function F, since we instrument them, uh, which are number of passing runs and filling runs where F is executed. Now, our goal is to get a C for a function F, uh, such that it satisfies this property. Uh, what we know is the importance formula. And uh, however, we don't know the value of P and NE, P or NE. Right, because we didn't instrument them, and we didn't run them. But we know the PF and NF value. So what, how do we get this? Our insight is, is that since we have this insight, the, ex the abstract execution information is an uh, execution of the fine grain, like the predicate level instrument uh, uh, execution. So for any uh, predicate, for any value of PE and NE, uh, it must be belongs to, uh, within this range, right? Remember that given any uh, program, given any uh, function, uh, if you give an input, if you run this program, if one predicate is executed within this run, then the function holding this predicate must be executed. <coughs> That's why we got these two uh, the relations between uh, P, P and N. Now let me show you how to use these two relations to get the C value without knowing the P and uh, N E. For example, uh, given a function f whose P f is one, N f is zero, how do we get a C value for this uh, uh, this f such that uh, this CF is an upper bound of all the uh, uh, important values of E inside F. Uh, remember that we know this PF and F, and then therefore uh, we know this uh, range for P and uh, for P and NE. As a consequence, so obviously we know these two possible uh, values, and then since we know this importance metric. Given this two uh, value, given this 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 uh, the the P and E, uh, therefore we can get the important value for each cell, and then we just get the maximum of these two important value as the C value of here. And similarly for the uh, function whose P F uh, and F are both one, uh, we get the range. Uh, we know there there are four possible uh, values. And then we get the important value for all of them. We get the maximum, and so on and so forth. So finally, uh, uh, we can get a table for C. So here, we treat the C metric as a lookup table. Uh, so you can see, uh, then later, once you give F a PF and F, we can check the C value for this F. And so, you can see there's an uh, obvious uh, a sub relation, uh, sub problem relation. We can use the dynamic programming to get the C. And now let's look at the evaluation part. Uh, this is the benchmark we used for our evaluation. The, uh, the first uh, category is uh, written in C, and then the, the, the lower is uh, for Java. Uh, we firstly did experiments on a single PC environment uh, to uh, uh, validate the effectiveness in reducing instrumentation cost uh, and further the user side over, uh, over overhead reduction. Firstly, we look at the, pro uh, the percentage of uh, predicate instrumented. So compared to the fully instrumentation approach, which uh, you need to instrument all the predicates, uh, currently we only need uh, instruments uh, less than uh, 40%. Am I right? Less than 
Yeah, it's about 30% uh, uh, on average. And uh, even for, for some bigger programs, only need 10% uh, practice are implemented in our approach. And also, uh, we compare the effectiveness on different types of predicates, and it shows that uh, our approach can effectively prune predicates, uh, predicate space for all three types, uh, while the effectiveness doesn't uh, differ much. And also, we compare the overhead with the sampling-based approach. And uh, since we only need to instrument uh, a function at each iteration, so the, co the overhead is pretty low. And also to mimic the real uh, cooperative debugging scenario, we run our experiments on the uh, distributed environment uh, with uh, local 12 nodes. Uh, so here we randomly select the subset of test cases for the abstraction phase and each iteration phase. We measure the data transfer. Uh, you can see, uh, so we receive a lot of uh, data transfer through the network. Yeah, to sum up, uh, we proposed this abstraction refinement based approach and uh, the overhead at user side is low enough and also we only need to collect and analyze a selected uh, profiles. Uh, we don't need that much uh, manual intervention and also the result is precise, uh, is, is a, a guarantee. Uh, by the way, so our artifact is, uh, is uh, evaluated so you can check our code and uh, all the experiment data to reproduce the data and uh, re uh, use or extend our code. Uh, yeah, that's it.